Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Tonight we have a late night insight video on a fragrance I've been testing for a while now. Actually, I've had this decant for well over a year and I've been occasionally spraying it on and just sort of biding my time waiting to talk about it. It's a perfume that really no one in the community, as far as at least the groups that I um, regularly visit uh, and converse with, talk about, okay? So it's a little bit of an outlier. And it's part of Burberry's Bespoke Collection, which, believe it or not, even Burberry has a bespoke collection or a privé collection, or sorry, I just dropped it, a high-end, you know, niche-type uh, uh, release. Even Burberry has one. And this is actually a, um, this is a, shop specific fragrance so you literally have to be in the burberry boutique to buy this perfume they don't sell it anywhere else interestingly enough uh i'm not sure if you can buy it on harrods anymore or something like that but i think literally you're supposed to be in the burberry boutique in order to buy this particular line of perfumes they were all done by francis kirk john i'll read you a little bit of the intro of the line if you will so this is the burberry bespoke collection and this one's called antique oak now, this decant was given to me by a very good friend, Mudasir. Mudasir, if you've been following my channel, you've heard me talk about him over and over and over again. He's somebody who helped me find some of these rare, hard-to-find bottles. Fantastic source. Uh, you can find him on Base Notes. He's a trusted member. Uh, I've used him many a times. And anyways, he said he was going to go on a little bit of a rampage and find me a Francis Kirk John fragrance I actually liked because I bashed many of Francis Kirk John's creations. And this was one of his recommendations, Antique Oak. Now, one thing that you'll notice is it's not just Antique Oak. It's also Antique Oak 35%. And so when you go to the Burberry Boutique, you can actually choose whether you want the oil percentage in your bottle to be 10%. 15% or 35%. So this is actually the strongest one. It's also the most expensive one, I believe. The lower the perfume oil concentration in your bottle, the cheaper it's going to be, okay? So um, I've been wearing this for a couple hours tonight, and I think I'm at a point now where I know, I mean, I probably could still wear it another couple times, but I think I know the fragrance well enough to do this review. And actually, I got to thinking uh, a few videos back, I actually did La Labo's Myrrh 55, which is a Shanghai City exclusive fragrance. For the month of September, you can buy all of the City exclusives on the Labo's website. So I figured I'm in an exclusive mood. Um, so what the hell? My life's been a little bit crazy lately. So let's do an exclusive uh, fragrance review. So Burberry's uh, Bespoke Collection, again, is exclusively sold at the Burberry Boutiques. And I believe there's seven of them in total that Francis Kirk John created. Um, this is the first one that I've talked about on the channel, and um, the whole idea is to capture the British spirit inspired by artistry, elements, and British landscapes. The creations are developed by master perfumer Francis Kirkjohn under the creative direction of Christopher Bailey. Okay, so I believe a bottle of this is somewhere around $250, which is pretty expensive. And I think maybe for the higher concentrations, it's even more expensive, but I'm not 100% sure. Say somewhere around $250, maybe a little bit less for the lower concentrations or a little bit more for the higher concentrations. So the way that they describe antique oak is that it is inspired by the heritage of British shipyards, compromises accords of oud, leather, earthy, and refined safflower and papyrus. So we'll talk a little bit about that. That's one of the blurbs according to um, Fragrantica. There was an article done on the whole collection and that's pulled directly from that article, okay? So um, another quick little blurb according to Scent Splits is Antique Oak is an amber woody fragrance and there are amber woods in this fragrance. However, they don't bother me. I'll tell you that right now. So some amber woods, I think, really get to people. The amber woods in here do not bother me. Um, and Antique Oak is a fragrant masterpiece taking inspiration from British wild oak forests and the richness of antique wood. Accords of oud, saffron, and musk create an eau de parfum that's artistic and delicate with a mysterious transpiring from its woody and leathery undertones. Okay, 
So it was released in 2017. Um, and so let me tell you what I get when you spray this. So the very first thing you're going to notice right off of the bat, if you have any familiarity with sort of synthetic uh, compounds, synthetic wood compounds, you're going to notice one thing immediately. And that thing is that this is a very synthetic smelling fragrance from the, from the jump, right from the go. It's a synthetic smelling composition. And it's basically synthetic wood mixed with incense in the very beginning, okay? And the wood note almost feels like you're smelling, and this is gonna sound like a diss, but damn it, it's true. Uh, if you've ever been to like Bath and Body Works and you've smelled some of their candles slash soaps slash, um, what else do they do? They do like uh, shower gels and stuff like that, you know? This smells like a woody note that you could almost get out of Bath and Body Works, right? And I know that sounds like a diss to a $250 fragrance, but it's actually the way the fragrance opens up to my nose. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you right out of the gate, I like this perfume, okay? So Moodaseer actually succeeded in finding a Francis Kirkjohn fragrance that I actually really like. Um, and it's funny though, because it's uber synthetic. And if you, if you, um, you know, follow my videos, uh, and you kind of see the way that I like to break perfumes down many times you'll you'll hear me say you'll hear me say something like I wanted to smell the fragrance and experience it before I looked at the notes right and so the re one of the reasons I've wore this so many times is that every time I go to sort of start to break this fragrance down before looking at the notes I have a very hard time describing what I'm smelling because I keep smelling this oud like accord right and so I actually wore this, uh, I think a time or two before I finally just relented and looked at the notes. And what I kept going back to is I kept getting this huge oud accord, um, huge. And I kept trying to sort of like describe the oud accord without actually saying it's an oud accord because I'm thinking antique oak. This is an oak fragrance, right? There's not a single oak note listed in this composition. Uh, it is an oud accord. Okay, so that's the very first thing. So it threw me for a little bit of a loop. It knocked me for a six, if you will, because I got this uh, very distinctive designer oud-like vibe, but I didn't know there was oud in here. So that so that was one of the reasons why it's taken me a while to finally get around to this little decant Moodaseer sent me well over a year ago. Um, and so the oud in here is sort of Francis Kirkjohn's representation of old oak, ancient oak, if you will. That's sort of what he's playing at. And, um, so once I looked at the note listing, it actually makes perfect sense because there's things like, like I said, oud, saffron, leather, and papyrus. And if you know my tastes at all, you know a couple things. So just to sort of get you in the ballpark, when you think of Leather, papyrus, woods, and incense. What's the very first fragrance that comes to your mind? This is what it is for me. It's Gucci Porom from 2003. This is a Michel Almarac creation. This is a little bit like a unicorn nowadays. These bottles go for big money, these Gucci bottles. I'm glad to have enough to do sort of a review. And there is a little bit of this fragrance in here. There's no doubt. Some people compare it to Tom Ford's Ebene Fume, which basically... Um, smells like this fragrance in a in a more modernized Tom Ford style, if you will. Um, and then the other fragrances that came to my mind are both papyrus fragrances. One of them is Private Label. Private Label may actually be a better representation for antique oak than even Gucci Por Homme. Because Private Label by Cecile Zerokian for the House of Javoy, basically focuses on this, um, yeah, this beautiful deep dark papyrus, but there's also vetiver in here. There's no vetiver in, um, there's no vetiver in antique oak. It's really focusing on the um, oud, saffron, uh, and there's another note which we're going to talk about here very soon, but it's focusing on the leather, oud, saffron, and papyrus. Those are sort of the main notes, if you will. But um, the papyrus note, that dark, earthy, you know, almost almost like uh, incense-y, papery-like feel, um, but a very earthy type smell. And that's why the vetiver goes so well, I think, in private label. Um, but you get a lot of the papyrus in uh, antique oak. And actually, if you've smelled this, this is almost like a designer version of Javoy's private label. This is Homage à l'homme 
Voyager by uh, Lalique. Lalique is a fantastic house. They're a very underrated designer house. Um, just a brilliant designer fragrance. But it, uh, I think actually Michelle Almarac was involved in creating this one as well. I can't remember exactly, but uh, I think he might have been involved in both of these. And they both sort of have this uh, antique oak feel, if you will. So Francis Kirkjohn, I think, was taking some inspiration from the great Michelle Almarac. And um, there is a very strange note of safflower oil in antique oak. And it got me thinking about sort of the carrier oil that Burberry is using because safflower oil can actually be used as a carrier oil. I don't know what type of, you know, oil Burberry is using, but it can almost have this bland and somewhat rancid feel to it. Um, and that could add to the oud effect that Francis Kirk John is sort of trying to go to in, in ancient oak. Um, it almost has this pale, musty-like smell. And that pale, musty smell um, plays very beautifully with that earthy, dry papyrus. Papyrus is an extremely dry note. It's one of my favorite um, dry fragrance notes. I love the way papyrus sort of adds that uh, papery dryness to a composition. And um, the oud note here is actually executed in this traditional Middle Eastern style, but it's very dark and very leathery. And if, again, if you know my taste, you know that I love these sort of dark leathery type fragrances. And so I have to give it to Mudasir. I mean, he literally said, I'm going to find you a perfume that from Francis Kirkjohn that you will appreciate. And damn it, he absolutely did. He actually hit the nail on the head on this one. Uh, Antique Oak, I think, is um, one of the better Francis Kirk Johns that no one ever talks about. I hear people talk about the usual Francis Kirk John creations, Ciel de Gomme, Absolute Pour Le Soir, uh, Fleur du Mal, which is probably one of the more underrated uh, Le Mal flankers, if you will. He does have some gems floating around here and there, um, but very few people talk about something like Antique Oak. And I think you really have to have the taste for it, if you will, because what's what's funny to me, though, is that this fragrance is supposed to be inspired by an ancient British wild oak forest. And and you take a perfumer like Francis Kirkjohn, who is such a modern, to me, Francis Kirkjohn's style is extremely contemporary and extremely modern in his creations. He, he just has that vibe about him. You know what I mean? Um, when you smell his creations, they just smell somewhat synthetic, somewhat plasticky, almost sci-fi sometimes, but very modern. That's just how his style is. That's his aesthetic, if you will. And um, it just screams this very high-end, modern-type designer oud scent. And to have the blur be that they want to represent this ancient British wild oak forest, they don't really blend necessarily. So, you know, if I close my eyes and, and smell this, I can't get to what the blurb is, is actually telling me on Antique Oak. Um, and I understand it's part of Burberry's signature collection or whatever they call it. Um, and they have to take inspiration because Burberry being a British brand, obviously they want to take inspiration from different British aspects. Shipbuilding was another thing that they said. Ancient British shipbuilding, which I guess goes with the oak. Um... But uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a fragrance where Francis Kirkjohn does his thing. And, and maybe he sort of had this fragrance already built. And Burberry just said, oh, we'll take that and sort of work with it, if you will. Maybe he already had, like, the scaffolding built. And they just added a few things here and there to fit what Burberry was looking for. This feels like something that maybe he had sitting over in his back pocket. I don't know if that's true or not. But it, I could see it because it the the... You know, what Burberry is saying, and when you actually smell this, they don't exactly go hand, they don't exactly fit like a puzzle. Um, but what I will tell you is that he does this style very well. Francis Kirk, this is sort of the style that um, he, I think, excels at. And when you smell some of the stuff that he's done recently, especially at Dior, like when you smell the new Dior, Dior, Iveri, Dior Ivera, or how do you pronounce that? Dior Dior, Dior, Iver, Dior, Dior Ivera. 
um, from 2023. He tries to do this sort of fresh fig leaf rose thing. It has a little bit of Dune Pour Homme in there, a little bit of Dior's Higher in there. I don't think he does that style very well, personally, to me. I think he should be focusing on his strengths. I talked a little bit about, uh, about strengths whenever I reviewed Creed Zesty Mandarin Pamplemousse and also um, whenever I reviewed uh, Royal English Leather by Creed. You know, those type of gray cap EDTs, many of them played to Creed's strength. Not all of them, but many of them did. And I really feel like Francis Kirkjohn should just focus on his strengths, what he does well. And these are the type of fragrances he does well. Stuff like this, Absolute Pour Le Soir, Seal de Gum. Um, those are the type of fragrances that he should focus on creating. But on the other side of the coin, you know, that's that's the type of things I think that the frag heads, the fume heads, you know, the fragrance nuts, the addicts really love. There are many people who love the other side of the coin, the fresher, lighter fragrances that we may not appreciate as much. And so obviously he's, as, as head of Dior now, he's weighing sales versus creativity. Um, but I think as far as creativity goes, fragrance for art's sake, you know, art in a bottle, if you will. I think Francis Kirkjohn really excels at that synthetic plasticky creations and he just goes full don't even try to hide it just go full into it um and that's the vibe that you get here and the papyrus gives off a little bit of a burning paper smell and and that burning paper smell gives it a little bit of an incense like vibe even though there's no frankincense listed in the note listing there is a little bit of this incense vibe and it's mixed with i think a little i think it's mixed with the secret ingredient here which is not in the note listing in parfumo but there are some articles that actually list this particular note. Like, for example, if you go to Herod's website, which, um, yeah, if you go to Herod's website and try to buy antique oak, it says the product is out of stock, right? But it'll give you the little blurb. And um, in the blurb, uh, there's a note breakdown. And in the note listing, there's leather accord, there's an animalic accord, there's... Um, Moroccan cedarwood oil note, which is not listed in the note listing in Parfumo either. There's oud wood oil from Laos listed, saffron accord, and finally there's fenugreek Morocco resinoid. Now, fenugreek is a very interesting note. Um, fenugreek was actually a note in Amouage's Royal Tobacco, which I have a review on the channel on. If you want to hear what I think about Royal Tobacco, you can check that out. Uh, it's under the Amouage playlist that I have, but also there's a fenugreek note in there. And fenugreek is a note which starts to appear probably, I would say, strongest in about an hour. An hour to two hours into this fragrance, you're going to really start picking up the very distinctive fenugreek-like uh, smell. And some folks, when if you read the blur, if you read the little Fragrantica comments and stuff on Antique Oak, Excuse me, you'll notice a lot, some people say there's like a boozy vibe to the fragrance. I don't really get a boozy vibe. But what I do agree with some folks on is that as it continues to dry, as the hours go on, this maple syrup-like smell starts to come out. And it's almost like a maple syrup smell mixed with body odor. Okay, now that may smell dis that may sound disgusting, but it's actually perfect for what this fragrance is getting at. Because if you've ever smelled Gucci Pour Homme 1, the incense in here, mixing with the woods, it does give it a little bit of a cumin -y, uh, like like vibe. And so the fenugreek uh, creates that, but in a way that's a little bit different because um, fenugreek can have this maple syrup vibe that comes from uh, a particular ingredient in the fenugreek called sotalone. And sotalone actually comes, is the, is the uh, particular, um, it is the particle that gives off that aroma that um, comes across as slightly maple syrupy, slightly cumin-y body odor, um, and a little bit even of a milky aspect. So there's a little bit of a milky aspect. There's some, um, you know, sites who claim fenugreek can do all sorts of things for you, that it can change your, um, your uh, body odor smell. And there are actually women that take fenugreek when they're trying to, when they're lactating, when they're trying to increase their milk supply. There are also women that take fenugreek when they want to change the way that they smell in different parts of their body. Uh, so there's different, you know, 
thought processes behind fenugreek, if it will, whether it changes your odor or it doesn't change your odor. But there are some people who say fenugreek has a little bit of like a baby vomit like smell, like a milky, syrupy baby vomit smell. And it's, it is a little bit of a weird combination because on one hand, it's almost like smelling cumin because of that under armor, un, under armor, under arm, um, body, masculine, excuse me, masculine body odor like smell. Also mixed with this kind of sweetness to it. And that sweetness can come across as sort of milky, musky, but maple syrup is actually a damn good um, representation for what ends up smelling in uh, antique oak. It does give off a little bit of a crystallized maple syrup-like feel, mixing with that uh, cumin -y body odor, mixing, um, you know, with the oud, if you will, and the dry, earthy, incense-y like papyrus. And, um, yeah, I mean, if you don't know, the, the yellow uh, uh, fenugreek seeds are actually a very important part of curry powder. So if you go to the store and you buy, like, curry powders to make curry, fenugreek seeds are a major part of that normally. Um, and so there's a bit of that curried vibe in there, but it actually, that sweatiness actually blends beautifully with the... Um, oud accord that Francis Kirk John created in here. So, you know, that bit of woodiness, it just really blends beautifully in there. And it really does feel like this is, uh, you know, you may be hard pressed to call this a niche, but this is their bespoke collection or whatever you want to call it. Um, their signature collection. Um, and they, there should be a little bit of a challenging aspect to this. You don't want this to all be designerish. Now, the argument that I've seen over and over again in some of the comments is that this smells like a $20 or $30 Middle Eastern fragrance. And you know what? I disagree with that. I don't think that's true because I have smelled a lot of those $20 and $30 Middle Eastern fragrances and they actually lean much heavier on the amber woods and stuff like that. I do think obviously that, you know, the Oud Accord here was created from probably some synthetic, lots of synthetic molecules. But like I said, Francis Kirk John does that style well. And I think he did a really good job here. This is one that deserves a little more talk. Now, I don't know, the one thing I will caution you on is I don't know if the 35% perfume oil that I have smells different than the 10%, smells different from the 15%. I don't know how the perfume oil concentration sort of changes the smell of the composition, but I will tell you that um, I'm impressed. I'm impressed with this. And Mudasir, you know me well, brother. Um, you know me well to uh, to basically send this along as the one Francis Kirk John that uh, you thought that I would that I would like. And, and you're right. He also sent along, there was an amber one from this particular line. Um, and I can't exactly rem it was called Amber Heath, I believe. Don't quote me on that. I think it was Amber Heath, and I broke it. It that was one of the decants that one of the few times I broke a decant, um, and the entire box it was in smelled like Amber Heath forever. For it, it probably still smells like it. Um, it was Amber patchouli, ambergris, benzoin, tolu balsam, peru balsam, tonka bean, and labdanum. It was a amber fragrance. Um, I wish I would have got a chance to review it with you guys, but I busted it. So anyways, I'm glad to be able to do this review. I like talking about things that not everyone is talking about. I hate doing what everyone else is doing. You know, I want to kind of do my own thing. So I know sometimes it's kind of random and I know some people make recommendations like, Hey, can you review this one or this one? And you know, maybe it's like a year before I actually get around to doing that. Cause I just sort of do my own thing. Some fragrances pop up then others come and go and um, and, and so, but I like the freedom of being able to do that. I don't like to being tied down to having to talk about the newest thing or something like that, you know? So that's my review of Burberry's Bespoke Antique Oak 35% Perfume Concentration by Francis Kirkjohn, launched in 2017. If you have experience with, uh, Antique Oak or this Burberry Bespoke Collection in general, do let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, like I said, leave a comment. We're still small enough. I can respond to every single comment. We're coming up on 5,000 subscribers and I still have no clue what the hell I'm going to do. So um, if you have suggestions, I've gotten some good suggestions. I don't know. I just don't know if I want to do any of them. But if you have a 5,000 subscriber bash collection 
sort of idea, video, give me a, drop me a note, drop me a comment. So appreciate everyone watching. Cheers, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.